So yesterday I took a trip to 66 Books in Hemel Hempstead. We're gonna talk about my experience. I've got a little vlog for you. I'm gonna talk about timings, tips, tricks, and I'm gonna show you what I bought. I've been so excited to film this video. Welcome everyone, my name's Charlotte. Welcome back if you're a returning viewer. If you're new, I do a little bit of everything. I don't really have like a snappy way to describe my channel, but I do talk about reading a lot and that's what we're gonna do today. So we're gonna talk about 66 books. For those of you that don't know what 66 books is, it is a book warehouse based in Hemel Hempstead, just outside of London. So it's about an hour and a half from Brighton. So usually 66 books is trade only and then one weekend a month, which can be found on their website, Website, they open up something called the 66 book club so the trade warehouse is open to the general public and during this time they're selling everything at wholesale prices so it's 70% off the cover price like most people I discovered 66 books on TikTok a couple of their videos or videos that people had made had gone viral and I think the queues and everything it, it just blew up essentially and there was like two three hour queue times on the weekends because they only open 70% to the general public one weekend a month it's become like a really big thing first of all I'm going to discuss the logistical stuff like getting there what time we decided to get there there, like the annual membership fee, the layout, then we're gonna go to a vlog and then I'm gonna go through my haul with you and we're gonna talk about pricing. It is an hour and a half away and we decided to go on a Sunday because it works out better for us and generally what I've seen is that Sundays are a lot quieter. They open at 9 a.m. but I believe last entry is around 4 p.m. because they say you need a couple of hours to look around. Our intention was to be there for 9 a.m. so we could be let in when it opened and from my research that I've done, which is a combination of the Facebook page, like recent TikToks and just general other YouTube videos, a lot of people have said that if you want to be let in for nine you need to start queuing at 7 30. so for us from brighton this would have meant like leaving at 5 30 a.m on sunday morning we were absolutely 100 percent gonna do that um we were really invested in doing that and a lot of people online had done that but what we discovered the day before is that 66 books actually has a facebook page that they do live updates on the queue time so we saw one from 9 a.m. the previous day and generally Saturday is a lot busier, but it was 9 a.m. It was about an hour and a half queue and it was one in, one out. And we just thought, oh. And we just thought if we get there at 7.30, we have to queue for an hour and a half anyway before we even let in. And then there's a chance that we have to queue for another hour. And we did think, you know what, we're going all that way. We don't really care if we're queuing, but also let's minimize queuing as much as we can. So we did a little bit more research and someone from last weekend had said that they got there at like 11.30 and there was only a half an hour queue. So we made a snap decision and we're like, fuck it, let's not get up at 5.30 in the morning to drive an hour and a half, especially it wasn't me driving, it was my friend driving, which is really, really kind of her. And I was just like, fuck it, I don't really care. I think the main reason people get there at nine is because they're worried things will sell out. But I just thought, you know what, I don't, I don't really have anything in mind that I wanna get. So let's just go for 11.30 and if we get there, we get there. And if we have to queue, we have to queue. It's not the end of the world. So we got there at 11, there was absolutely no queue. There was spaces in the car park, someone to show us where to park. It was a beautiful day, there was no one outside. So it just worked out perfectly. So this is something I knew because I'd done my research, but because it's a working warehouse, it's not organized like a bookshop. So I personally would recommend not going there with anything specific in mind to buy. So it's literally standard from bottom to top. There's kickstools everywhere that you can climb on if you need one. The aisles are super, super narrow. It's not very accessible as a building, but obviously that's because it's a working warehouse. So just bear that in mind. You really need to take your time and look at like every single thing that's on the shelf. It was sort of arranged so that all the classics were together. There was a lot of memoirs and biographies together. Um, lots of sci-fi was together. But then on that aisle, it wasn't like all sci-fi and fantasy. There'd be like fantasy here, fantasy there, fantasy there. The bottom floor is mainly non-fiction and children's books, but there is some fiction hidden away in pockets. And then the top floor is a lot of non-fiction, a lot of notebooks and stationery, and then adults fiction. I personally would recommend two to four hours when you get in there. You have to register and pay an annual fee of two pounds. You scan a QR code before you get in there. And then you grab a basket from the bottom of the stairs and head straight up. So the baskets were just like blue, like shopping baskets. I saw someone on TikTok take a suitcase, but to be honest, I don't think that's the easiest option because 
it's really hard to like open a suitcase in those aisles. I know these are horrible, but I took an old lady shopping trolley and it saved me. It was narrow enough to fit down the aisles. I saw some people carrying like two baskets and looking really uncomfortable. If you plan to buy a lot, which I did, I would take one of those or like a tote bag or a backpack if you have one. A couple of people did laugh at my shopping trolley, but I just thought, you know what? Like I'm comfortable, my arm doesn't hurt especially because those baskets get really heavy and I did hear a lot of people complaining being like oh sorry I can't get my basket around you like when you're trying to swing around because people are just stood in aisles I might have said earlier but one of the main reasons people go early is to make sure that stuff isn't sold out and to be honest I didn't really feel like there was anything that sold out there was one small shelf that kind of looked like there was a couple of books left on it and it looked like it might have been kind of popular TikTok romance books but I couldn't really tell and also I wasn't really fast because a lot of those are free on Kindle and anyway so I did one full lap when I first got there just to kind of see what the drill was how everything was organized and then I just went in random aisles that seemed a bit emptier while I looked up and down and then once I kind of had the swing of things I went like fully through every single aisle one thing I will say is that I had kind of used up a lot of my energy for the day by the time we got to the ground floor because I assumed it was all non-fiction and kids and while a lot of it was non-fiction and kids there definitely were some pockets of fiction but I just didn't want to go through everything again so I just left it and I already had like a trolley full of books they honestly have everything in there so they have non-fiction hardbacks like paperbacks loads of kids stuff I was thinking if you're a parent or you have like young kids in your family go Going there for Christmas must be amazing because they had all ages so many amazing series that I read when I was a teenager or like kind of 10 years old that kind of thing you know that like pre-teenage they had full series and all the kids stuff they also had things like puzzles coffee table books um journals like crossword books they had travel books loads of historical books they had literally every single topic you could think of like cookbooks they had so many cookbooks they also had tarot cards and tarot decks and loads of kind of like mindfulness and meditation books i mean they're supposed to stock bookshops so like everything you could possibly have in a bookshop they had it in there i kept thinking if i was like moving and i wanted to buy some really nice coffee table books because they had like massive hardback ones and like encyclopedias it would be the perfect place to buy some like nice decorative coffee table books because they're usually so expensive my only slight bugbear and i don't know if this is because we got there late was that there were some series that i would often stumble across that there'd be like book two five and six so there, there was often not book one or a complete series available there was a very short queue to pay at the end there was only like three or four people um i just popped everything straight back in my trolley they took card and cash payment but they do also have big cardboard boxes so you can box it up and carry it out to your car if you want there's no smooth way for me to transition into the vlog part of the video so we're going to do that now and then i'm going to show you my haul and talk pricing This is a bit silly, but I bought 14 books and it cost me, let me just go get my receipt. It cost me 44 pounds, 26 pence. Everything is 70% off the cover price. They do explain this all at the beginning and there are a few exceptions which will have a sticker on the cover saying three or five pounds, but I didn't pick any of those up. I'm not very good at math. So before I went in, I just looked up what 70% off 9.99 was. So I kind of had a frame of reference. I just assumed everything I picked up was gonna be three to five pounds. So that kind of gave me a rough idea. And I always, with these kinds of things and shopping, I always prefer to overestimate how much it's gonna cost. So actually when I had all of those in my basket and I paid at the end, it's not very good math to me, but I was kind of expecting to spend around 75 pounds because I was just throwing stuff in my basket. I definitely would have bought a lot more if they had complete series, but I also don't have a lot of space for physical books. So I was being quite careful in my head about what I picked up. The receipt doesn't have an itemized list. So I'm gonna go through everything that I bought. And at the same time, I'm gonna tell you the cover price and we're gonna add it up on the screen as we go. First book I bought was Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. Heard really mixed reviews about this, but really have wanted to read it for a long time. So I just thought I'd pick it up. Basically everything I saw, I only went based on vibe and 
I just grabbed it because it either looked interesting or I've wanted to read it before. So I would literally skim read the blurb and then get it. There's not a lot of critical thought behind this pile. I either wanted it based on the vibe or someone's told me it's good. The cover price for this is $9.99. Next up is Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. This was actually recommended by my friend that I went with. She said I'd really like it. So looking forward to that. I think it's kind of like indescribable horror, which is right up my street. Cover price for this was $8.99. Wanted to read this for a long time. It's Sister Sister by Candace Brathway. I follow Candace on TikTok and I watch her podcast every now and then. And I just really, really like her content. Cover price is $9.99. Exquisite Corpse by Poppy Z Bright. Seems like a horror. I would hope so. Um, I went purely on the vibe here. It's about a serial killer that fakes his own death to escape a life sentence in prison. It's been a brief minute since I've read some horror and horror is actually one of my favorite genres. This one actually doesn't have a cover price. So let's look it up. Amazon says cover price is £8.24. I've been recommended this series of books so many times and I've wanted to read it since last year. They didn't have all three of them, but they had two of them. So I thought we'd start with that. It is Get a Life Chloe Brown and Take a Hint Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert. And these are $9.99, $9.99. I've never actually read The Love Hypothesis. I know, shock horror, I probably should. But this really caught my eye. So it's a series of novellas, um, a steminist novella collection. So all of the love interests are signed scientists so it's three novellas but it's like within the same universe they're all friends so one of them's an environmental engineer one of them's a civil engineer and one of them's a nasa aerospace engineer i just thought that's just like a nice fun read i love a novella the cover caught my eye it looks cute just thought for a little bit of fun romance and the cover price of this was 9.99 i grabbed a book called hydra by matt wesolowski this was one i picked up three or four times kept putting it back in the same place and then my friend that I was with was like oh yeah I've read that it's really good so it's a murder mystery which is not normally my thing but the cover just really intrigued me cover price $8.99 books from a series that I've been highly recommended so the first one is The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet and it's by Becky Chambers so from my understanding there are five books in the series but you can read them all separately there's a proper term for this but they don't all take place like back to back you can read them all as like their own separate stories so i got this one which is 9.99 i got the galaxy in the ground within also by becky chambers and the cover price for that is 8.99 this one says it's the last one so maybe i will try get some of the others but you can read them all separately they're all like different stories and then i got record of a spaceborne few also by becky chambers this one's 8.99 as well the only slightly annoying thing is one of them's gloss and the rest are matte but you know what i'll live there was a fair amount of fantasy there a lot of it was quite a high fantasy heavy lore and i just really try not to buy too much physical fantasy because some of it lets me down so much but i bought windhaven by george rr R. martin and lisa tattle i thought i would give this a go i just saw on the back that it says it's romance it's science fiction and i just thought fine there's a little bit of romance in it let's get it and this one was 9.99 a classic that i've never actually read is interview with a vampire by anne rice spooky season why not love the movie this one was 8.99 and then last but not least the first book i actually picked up when i was in there um is this book called the tarot life planner it is a hardback and i do have loads of tarot books so i usually wouldn't have got this but i was having a quick flick through and I just think the explanations on these are really good. It's not super, super wordy and the card is explained very, very well. I really enjoyed it. And I just thought, you know what, why not? Because it's a really gorgeous book. There was a tarot deck in there called the Dante Tarot that I really wish I picked up, but it didn't have an RRP on it. It was, it was probably about 28 pound full price online and that still would have only been like a fiver. <laughs> with 70% off but I just panicked and I thought I don't need another tarot deck I don't need another tarot deck when I love mine so much um so I thought a book would suffice and this was 16 pounds RRP this book also does have like loads of information on like different spreads it has things about career and mandala spreads which I've never done how to look at like 
what's most important to you, how to achieve your dream future, planning for the future. So it has got a lot of ideas. I'll probably be less um, inclined to use those and just use it for the meanings, but it does go really, really deeply into each card and like the different aspects of the suits and a little bit of numerology from the looks of things. So just perfect for me. I love numerology, I'm a bit obsessed. I don't know much about it, not very good with numbers, but I find it really interesting. This is everything I got from 66 books. I hope this video has been useful for you if you're planning your own trip over there. I know a lot of people treat it a bit like a military operation, but honestly, it's just a fun day out and a chance to get cheap books. Let me know if you've been or if you'd like to go. I do try post a little bit more kind of like bookish content over on my TikTok and I'm trying to post more bookish content over here on YouTube but there's just so much to film and so little time. All of these will be going on my TBR. What I'll do is I'll link my story graph. I don't use a Goodreads page because I think the story graph reviewing system is a bit better. Um, so I pop that in my description box. If you want to add me on there and see kind of where I'm up to with my reading target, which is 100 for this year. I'm only on like 60 at the moment. Or you want to see what I'm reading or see what I have read, what my five star reads are, please feel free to add me as a friend on there or follow me. I do post my reads over on my story on Instagram as well when I can. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed my video and hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye friends.